standing outside in the freezing cold in January outside of a restaurant or something like that. Yeah. Uh, someone, someone trying to bum your cigs, right? <laughs> you don't want that. Matthew Dumba, how are you, my friend? Good. How are you guys doing? We don't have great introductions on this podcast. We just sort of, <laughs> we just sort of see you pop up and we start talking to you. Where, where are you at right now? I'm back in Calgary right now. Where are you guys at? We're in Toronto while Dan's out, uh, just outside of Toronto. We're in the greater Toronto area, I guess you could say. I'm in a little area. town called Orno, and on our Welcome to Orno sign is Stanley Cup champion Brian Bickle's name. Bix. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a player, though. On those cup runs? Ooh, yeah, that's right. That is a play. So, are you at your are you at your place in Calgary, Matthew? Is that where you spend your off season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back at the back at the crib. Um, yeah, I just had to come back here get get out of uh, when this was all going down with the pandemic. Um, just kind of talk about closing the border. So I was just trying to get back here as uh, as fast as possible. So I, I wasn't stuck in the in the states. And. Uh, are you training currently with anyone in Calgary? Any other player? Um, one of my buddies I grew up with, uh, Dylan Hetherington. He plays for uh, Texas Stars. He's captain of Texas Stars, and he's up and down with Dallas. So have you been in touch with teammates, and are they sticking to their workout routines, or are we going to see, like, <laughs> circa 1980 <laughs> NHL where it takes, like, two weeks before guys are like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of back in shape again. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's there's a good – guys are – guys are working out to keep their sanity, I think. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if there's any uh, any good videos coming out of that uh, that first couple of weeks of training camp. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of sure training, they're... remember, Matthew, uh, like back in the day, like – even when Nikolai Habibulin played and he would like go and hack a dart in between the first and second <laughs> period, is anybody in the NHL still smoking? That's, we were just discussing the fact that we're going to take up smoking later in life because we never did it. <laughs> we're going to try it later. Uh, Dude, anybody still crushing darts in the NHL? To be honest, I haven't heard of anyone still doing hacking darts between the. <laughs> but. I do. It, it is kind of it's frequently talked about in my friend group, uh, just being in Calgary, because I heard back in the day Mika used to do it. Yes, he so, did. Uh, it, that's yeah. everyone's favorite goaltender around here, and um, yeah, even the fact that he was uh, smoking darts in between periods, or or maybe smoking darts in between periods, um, is this they, a trick? They call that they, they, they call really that the uh, Guy Lafleur smoking darts between periods right. because Lafleur <laughs> did that. And I don't know, Matthew, if you ever seen the video of um, Ally Afraidy. Uh, he's about to do a, a post game interview, and he's hacking on a dart, and he's like, "How much do I have?" And they're like, 30 seconds." And he's like, takes one more haul and then just flicks it off camera. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the you hear stories about in some of the rinks that. Back in the day, like guys had specific rooms built for them or areas that they would go. <laughs> Whether it's like the showers or they were like sneaking off away from the locker room. But uh, no, the game's changed a lot since then. Okay, so we've got the smoking. What is the the strangest current thing that you've seen a player do? Like we've seen Ovi drink a Coca Cola on the bench. I, I see that you need sugar in your system. What's the strangest thing you've seen a teammate or an opponent do where you're like? What the hell's that guy doing? Um, the coke on the bench. I've actually seen that's that's actually a normal thing. But people people put it in the in the Gatorade bottle sometimes, hide it a little, you know. Well, but, Colby Armstrong, Matthew said about that. It wasn't just the sugar, but that you know, guys, if they're nervous, sometimes like a coke, you know, will sort of settle their stomachs down a little bit. That that was his theory about it. I'll be honest. In between, in between the second and third, I, I treat myself. To a coke. <laughs> nice. And I, some, sometimes I'll be like battling in the first, like thinking about the coke. Like, hey, <laughs> let's get there. A <laughs> third period's your period, buddy. <laughs> 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 we get this pull in you. 
What about Pedialyte? Are guys crushing Pedialyte still? You're seeing that. You're seeing that uh, on the plane. Like they're dishing out Pedialytes maybe on back to back. I'm not really a big fan of the Pedialyte, but I've seen a couple Pedialyte tonics on the plane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, okay, we, we kind of have to get serious with you because you are part of a big, big announcement uh, this week, Matthew. Uh, you are on the executive committee of the Hockey Diversity Alliance that has just been formed. Uh, Akeem Aliou and Evander Kane are the co-chairs, and then you're part of the executive committee with uh, Wayne Simmons, Chris Stewart, uh, Joel Ward, who recently retired, among others. First of all, um, how did this all come about exactly, and and was it Akeem and was it Evander that sort of spearheaded it? Um, yeah, it was. It came about probably, we've been talking since uh, November, um, and then it just happened to be um, this seven guys who kind of stuck together. Um, we've all either played together or, you know, are acquainted through each other in some way or another. So um, it's cool having a group that um, everyone's everyone's uh, friends with. And we just, we've just we just been talking constantly for um, the last week and a bit or two weeks, um, every day or every other day for, you know, hours at a time. So... Um, we've done our due diligence and um, announcing it uh, announcing it yesterday was kind of the first big step. Now, do you, are you going to be a sounding board for, for players right now? Um, how's this going to work? Because uh, we've seen stories coming out of the, uh, the GTHL in Toronto, uh, what it was like uh, for some players uh, playing in that system being black. And you saw Akeem's story. Are we, are you guys going to help these people tell these stories? Are you going to be there uh, for you guys to listen to them? What are you, what's your guys' goal? I think, yeah, we've talked about that in a number of different ways. And uh, kind of a mentorship program has been uh, kind of floating around there. Um, but really, um, yeah, it is attacking those um, those minor league, uh, not even minor league, it's uh, the minor, minor hockey. Minor hockey, yeah. Minor hockey starting right from the start because um, I think that's where we all first, um, you know, dealt with racism, um, and that's that's so sad. Um, even just hearing guys' stories or hearing kids' stories about it, it's, it's still happening today. Just you know, it, it pulls out um, pulls out my heart, and it just you know, it brings up all those feelings that I had um, when I was little, when I was going through that stuff uh, with my family. And, you know, it's, it's not right. So I think that's one of the biggest stands our, our group is going to take. And, um, yeah, I think, I think we're going to do um, some awesome stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited to just, yeah, share this with the world. Or did you yourself, Matthew, experience a lot of racism uh, growing up uh, playing minor hockey? Yeah, uh, on a number of different occasions, um, you know, it, it affected my family to the point where, you know, you're leaving, leaving rinks and, um, you know, mom would be in tears or just, she, you know, she'd just be irate. And, um, you know, you're just yelling on, on the way out of the rink and, you know, having dad, I was to try to just kind of get us into the car and, and having those deep family talks, um, later on in the night. But, um, you know, going through all of that and then, also, you know, not wanting my mom to feel like that way or my little brother see that, you know, I, I'd taken a lot of that stuff and, and bottled it up over the years. So when I got on with this group and started hearing guys' stories, um, it just made me think, like, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be a conversation that um, parents have to have with their kids. You shouldn't have to sit down in your child and tell them, hey, like, you got to take the high road and you got to... Uh, you gotta have tough skin and work through this. They're they're only doing that because that's their that's the only thing they have on you. Um, you know that that conversation doesn't really happen uh, with white parents, um, and it, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be in our game at all. So you mentioned the the talks you had to have with your, with your parents, but there must have been a part of you. If I had to experience that, I'd just say F- this, F- them. Why do I want to put myself through this? I'm never going back to that rink. 
And that and that's the part. Like I've seen since my time in Minnesota, um, I've had a, a bunch of different kids um, come to the locker room after a game um, that have faced that, and that's that's the worst part about it. Some of those kids are pushed to that point where they don't want to go back. And I, uh, fortunate for me, I was you know I had that strong love for the game. Um, I kind of just pushed through it. But can you imagine? Um, a generation of kids who didn't have to deal with that and could just love the game um, at its purest and um, you know what 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 could be you know if you can if you can tap into this generation of kids that doesn't have to go through those things um, it, it just it, it could be you could just grow the game so much more and, and just make this um, something really special that we all love we all love the game of hockey and you know, just to spread this would be would be awesome. I wonder, uh, Matthew, your your thoughts and your feelings over the past couple of weeks since George Floyd was killed, because of course you play in Minnesota and you're you're living in that town, and that that town is kind of a part of you right now. Uh, I'm just wondering what your thoughts and emotions uh, were, not just about the the horrific video itself, but just the city itself, um, and 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 how they've you know reacted to what happened. Yeah, um, to be honest, I could I could see if I was standing in my apartment, I could see that whole community um, from my apartment. It's only a mile and a half away, um, and I do work um, pretty closely with that community. Um, there's a group, of, a nonprofit I work with called um, Aces Athletes Committed to Educating Students, and we look to bridge the gap of um, the education system in Minnesota. Um, in the parts of the city um, that are less fortunate and a lot of those kids are in that community so on lake street specifically uh, where the riots and um, the protesting was going down that was kind of my first reaction is i'm i'm scared for those kids and those kids that may not have uh, somewhere else to go right now and they're scared to leave their homes but really everything around them is on fire and um, it's just like anarchy through that, and a lot of a lot of the people coming into the neighborhood weren't even from there, or they're from all over the U.S. Um, and, and not a lot, um, not a lot of them protesting um, the protesting or grieving through the um, George Floyd um, death. People just there to um, loot and and start fires and. Kind of break down the community, um, whereas the people in Minnesota and the people part of that community you saw in the days after um, were cleaning up and handing out groceries. Um, so I was really proud of seeing Minnesota come together the way they have, and I think it's terrible, terrible tragedy, and no one should have had to gone through any of this. But the fact of the matter of it happening now and seeing how people are coming together and these talks that everyone's having, um, getting it out there, I think is what we really need to um, promote this change and um, make a change in our society that will uh, that will last. Yeah, and George Floyd, as they keep saying, uh, his daughter said it, I believe one of his siblings said it, that's his memorial service today. He's going to change the world. That, um, that mural of him in Minnesota is already iconic. Yeah, it is. And yeah, uh, he is going to change the world. Um, you know, rest in power. I, I like I like when I've seen people saying that. Um, it is powerful. Um, just crazy the effect that he's had on this community and um, the change and difference he's going to make in, in a lot of people's lives. Special. Um, or other, you know, there, there's the seven of you who have who started the alliance, who sort of the, the committee. Are other black NHLers, both past and present, Matthew, have, have you contacted them, reached out to them, or have they reached out to you? Um, yeah, a lot of guys have been reaching out. Um, you know, we're looking to um, expand as, as a group and have um, people come on as ambassadors from all races. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's um, – we're starting with um, – with black people and having and promoting black lives matter but um at the end of the day we're gonna have we're gonna have a bunch of different guys on this board um women um 
it, it's going to be something special um, that everyone can uh, grow through and everyone can uh, help be a part of this, uh, be a part of this movement. Do you think, I'm not going to categorize uh, Vander Kane as like a stubborn guy or a cocky guy, but do you think maybe he has that attitude because of the <laughs> that he's had to deal with while playing hockey and people misunderstand him? That's just, He's, he's grown a thick skin. He's like, this is the way I have to carry myself and everyone else can F off. Yeah, to be, you know, to be honest, you know, playing against Evander, it's, uh, it's not very fun. I didn't really like the guy <laughs> much before, uh, before I got to know him. But um, just his views on, on all of this and how he's just been, he's been working tirelessly. This guy's been on the phone and, and just making a difference, like, yeah, every day, every second. Um, hard, hard to get, a, hard to, you know, time down for um, a moment just to just to have a conversation because, you know, he's got he's got a lot of things on the go right now. Him and Akeem. Um but yeah, he's always had to, you know, play with that chip on his shoulder, and you see that in his game. You see that, you know, in a lot of our games. So, um, you know, it it, it could have been a reason why he got to where he was and why he is a little misunderstood, but. I think once you get to know him and what is uh, what his heart is is about, um, you'll you'll be able to understand more and, uh, and and like him a lot more. All right, let's uh, let's lighten things up. Favorite thing about playing for uh, Red Deer and Junior? Ooh, favorite thing playing in Red Deer. Hitting Denny's on a Sunday with the, with. <laughs> And just putting in an order. <laughs> <laughs> it's just saddle up there with my ten dollar bill and just going nuts. <laughs> with um, the, like that. Eat of the boys. <laughs> this one's gonna be tough. You won a gold for Canada in Russia in twenty sixteen. What's your favorite part about Russia? Oh, Mother Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I, Ilya Briskalov. Yeah, good answer. Good answer. But I, I got to play with them for like, got to play with them for a couple months or whatever. But the Bri, the Grizzly Bear man. He, uh, what was that like? Give us, uh, what, like, was he, uh, was he in fine form at all times, or was he, uh, was oh, the yeah. mood up and down? He was. He was hilarious, man. There's one uh, time we're in the we're in the locker room after a tra- or a preseason game. I was like, Riz, how was that? And he goes, like a uh, tail of dog. I'm like, what? He's like, all you young kids come in here, play a game, and it's just tail of dog. You don't know what you're doing. You're so excited, like hit. <laughs> Puck everywhere, guys not where they're supposed to be. Like everyone's so excited, like puppy jumping up and down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I wish I had this on video, man. <laughs> like, there's, there's thousands of stories like that. He's what a guy! Uh, and 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 now, and now you have Dubnik, who's like maybe he's the opposite. Like he's almost like a cerebral type. He, or, or or am I wrong? Or is he is he shown? Is there a side of him that we don't get to see all the time? Uh, I don't know. No, there's there's a, there's a bit of a side that you don't get to see. Do we do likes to talk and uh, and get in the mix? So uh, yeah, you just push him push him into it a little more next time. How about Miko Koivu? Is he a robot? <laughs> no, I'm just. It's just uh, like he's a guy I, I, that just he just continues on. He they they put like you hit the start button, and he just continues on. You're like that guy is still playing. He he's still playing. Yeah, he's uh he he's been awesome to me and, and my family. Um, just just a great leader and someone who you know once you once you get close to him, once you. Uh, yeah, get the get a couple of the screws loose and get into the, <laughs> the interior of the robot. Um, <laughs> he, he's he's awesome, dude, and uh, you know he's uh, he really showed me what it takes to uh, be a professional in the league because this guy comes to comes to work every day um, and just ready ready to work and get better. 
Um, that's just a testament to his longevity in the in the league, right? So for you, Matthew, uh, if if we think the training camps might get going mid July, hopefully, I mean optimistically, uh, when do you see yourself uh, heading back to the Twin Cities? Uh, I'm not even too sure. I guess I'll depend on if they have a uh, you know a definitive date on when phase three will start. Um, looking like end of July or start of August. So maybe maybe within the next month, month and a half. So um, still got some time, but um, yeah, that's that's gonna be crazy just jumping back into the mix like that. Your take on whoever wins the cup. Is there an asterisk? Or are you just like, yeah, yeah, they want it. No problem. Uh, if Wild wins the cup, there's no asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> there's no asterisk. I'm a champ. You guys are not taking that away from me. <laughs> no one. Anyone, you, but, anyone else wins? Yeah, there's an asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, yeah. But are you, uh, I mean, you could end up, you know, living in a hotel for three months. You know, like, it does, do you stop and think about, about that? I mean, I guess you're kind of living in hotels anyway on the road, but it's like one hotel. I mean, it's kind of a weird situation to think about. That, that could honestly be a reason why you take away the asterisks, because you're going to have to battle through this um, if you go deep into the playoffs and um, just being away from your families and friends. Um, you know, that can that could definitely wear on guys. And I know that's kind of some of the guys' concern too is you know, you're you're in the middle of you're in the middle of summer and you know, a lot of the guys got the kids at home right now and yeah. Havoc, you got them cooped up from the pandemic and now uh, now dad's gone for a couple of months. So um But I'm come not, on, I admit though not sure. a, a lot of guys are like, get me the hell out of here. I can't <laughs> wait for this. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's probably true too. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. You could you could argue there's a hundred different ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, Matthew, this was uh, awesome just to get to talk to you a little bit, and uh, congratulations again on the on the alliance formation. I think that's just uh, such an amazing thing you guys are doing, and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, continued success in uh, in Minnesota and all that, and uh, and I hope you're staying safe in Calgary. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for having me. This is a uh, this is really dream come true being on with you guys. I know I'm speaking for uh, my whole friend here in Calgary. I used to watch you all every day before school, and uh, we we're pretty pumped that I was coming on here today. And who? Hey, wait, we, we have a who's behind you? Scrum lurkers. Who is that behind you? There? Someone, someone's lurking. <laughs> we're all. Yo, Blakey. Yo, come on, say hi. We're, we're all back here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Hello. The crew. <laughs> Hello. Gabby Tackle, come say hi. Oh. <laughs> right, right, right. Whoa, they're there coming they out are. everywhere. There they are. They're all, they're all behind there the wall there. <laughs> right, thanks, guys. Okay, guys. Have a great enjoy day. your Tuesday night. Hey, yeah, later. take care. See you later. See you guys. Oh, they're going to rip it up tonight. Cool. Good to see him.